Hello uh, again. Uh, yeah, yeah, we hear you. Do you see presentation maybe? Yeah, we see. Uh, it's only presentation or everything on top of it? Uh, it no, uh, no, we see only pr your presentation. Uh, yeah, that's good. Okay, mm -hmm. uh, again, I want to thank Tom if he is here yet, because it was very interesting presentation and not what I expected. And because of this, uh, I even updated my one. <laughs> well, I thought it would be also uh, quite fit to have a bit more scientific style or something, but I had to add at least a few more funny projects. Uh, as I work in the mobility area, it's uh, it's more Emphasis, emphasis on uh, mobility and uh, but uh, well Tom told that uh, and that also during the day before yesterday that there are some issues which are not allowed like painting painting in different colors uh, road surfaces or something like but also there are things which is mm -hmm. possible to do even though it's not uh, part of uh, official recommendations or guidelines for traffic organization. So uh, basically what is, uh, first what is tactical urbanism in terms of uh, what is written in Wikipedia, but it is uh, a bit more uh, what is practice in Ukraine. So it's not only low cost, but also long term in some cases. And also, from at least from my point of view uh, and my work, it's a uh, very important method to test concepts which are not uh, still city administration, which is not ready to accept. So we can say, let's try to do it cheap and then uh, nothing happened and then everything fine. So let's just not remove it for the next 10 years. Also to upgrade infrastructure, which is not possible to do other way because of bureaucracy. Uh, like if cities spend the uh, municipal money on upgrade of street, it can, a city cannot spend money on the same street, except some urgent cases for next like five, 10, 15 years, because it would be asked why, uh, that it's um, not uh, reasonable spending of budget and uh, some like police or anti-corruption can ask uh, a lot of questions and uh, uh, nobody wants to have this issue with himself. Uh, here will be examples from Ivano Frankivsky, Lviv, Ternopil and Jetnomir. So maybe some participants would even find some places which they are familiar with. Let's start from public spaces. Uh, this one would be short. Uh, very classical tactical urbanism from any definition is to put chairs, put uh, this benches from reuse material, put uh, a temporary uh, place for events. Uh, it, I think it started from Meisterne Mista or urban workshop, which, uh, uh, which uh, started in Lviv, but then spread to another cities with the same concept, with temporary uh, place for events and with a lot of new things, which allow, allows to um, bring new temporary life to, to some industrial area or just a place where nobody was thinking about as public place. Also, I believe everybody at least from Ukraine, so such things. Uh, it's from you, but could be everywhere. I believe it's also uh, some way tactical urbanism because people want to enhance uh, their yards, their places, at least somehow. And it's also cheap. So somehow it, it's the same, uh, different quality of design, different quality of materials maybe, but still uh, a bit more uh, complicated issue. It's uh, uh, old factory, which is uh, 
currently being redeveloped to um, co-working to uh, creative industry cluster and they decided to have uh, such place in front of their uh, uh, factory office and also here is a much more complicated thing uh, actually I think it's first play first case when in uh, I think 2012 it was a case when uh, benches were installed by the cost of citizen so it was uh, on the left side uh, part of sidewalk which was not really used except for parking of two cars and then uh, one of uh, bloggers from Lviv decided that it could be something better but very cheaply so uh, I invite you to read about uh, this case in the blog because it's very long so uh, this guy collected uh, crowdfunded installation so he found uh, this big concrete things which are um, for water pipes and he just went to the factory bought uh, uh, two of them which were the most uh, round ones the most flat ones the most nice looking uh, then hired uh, somebody who did a few uh, attachments of uh, metal and then uh, covered with wood and uh, what is more funny uh, even when still they were installing this uh, benches uh, it people already started to come like uh, there are people around uh, they are loading the trees uh, uh, materials everything like and people came and start and sit and uh, relax in in the same moment while still everything was construction place in, in uh, now it's much better looking after uh, six or seven years of uh, from construction but uh, but uh, it was very good initiative to show and to, that uh, people can enhance uh, city also in such a way not just uh, putting uh, cameras from uh, used cameras from cars to to the ground um, okay another ah, again pro, uh, about chip enhancement so it's uh, it was uh, one of potential location for uh, your workshop uh, here in center between two uh, two advertisement it was a uh, small kiosk well not so small kiosk uh, which was removed by the city with uh, a lot of uh, legal aspects that they were claiming that it's they it's their land and they have rights but it's a very uh, like very central place of the district intersection of two main streets and this kiosk was very not good so uh, local administration uh, just decided to do at least something to shift people's mind from this old kiosk so that's why they like in in two days they put the small trees which are people uh, some experts say that uh, they are not the best they put this I love Pasichna district uh, here, but uh, it was again from my point of view, it's tactical urbanism because they did it uh, cheap comparably, uh, they did it fast, and the result is uh, anyway, this area is looking better than uh, before. Also, idea one more use is to prove long term concepts. In 2016, uh, you cannot see a big nice church to the left from here it's very historical center of uh, city and uh, uh, it was it, this square is very empty so uh, few uh, NGOs and uh, experts from other <laughs> from different uh, areas decided that it should be some uh, some green here but uh, as it's very central part 
a lot of people come to make photos here and uh, it, there were a lot of uh, claims that oh you put trees and it would uh, break view of this nice church and tourists wouldn't come to our city and everything would be bad and you know so it was agreement that okay uh, it would be trees which would be planted in uh, uh, containers which could be easily removed in case if something goes wrong as you can see in 2012 uh, 20 uh, nothing went wrong and uh, the same trees were planted into the square for long time uh, so it it was proof uh, of concept which for a few years uh, tourists were they didn't stop to visit the church they didn't stop to make photos uh, they just started to enjoy better view and uh, better conditions on the street. And that's it from uh, public spaces. Uh, there is something I need to read it or hopefully you know. Uh, let's go to mobility, which is uh, one of like 10 years ago example to push uh, our city local officials was to uh, was installation of first by uh, on the right you can see first uh, a cycling pass in Lviv because uh, at that time it was a uh, very strong movement of uh, cyclists they claimed that uh, city needs cycling infrastructure but uh, city council told that okay it's one percent of people one percent of uh, movement, so why we should uh, spend money on this? And uh, after long time, uh, to the left you can see uh, construction of cycling lane on the some cycling path on the same street with a nice uh, sidewalk from the side, nice view in the central part of the city. Uh, again, not very uh, designers think. It's new building and uh, uh, somebody did the wrong thing that uh, it was very easy to go through yard of this building to, over, uh, to avoid traffic jams. So a lot of people from Main Street started to use this uh, passage and uh, uh, after some time uh, residents of this building decided to um, enforce traffic rules which not allow to pass through yard of building uh, if you are transit traffic uh, but without uh, such uh, 60 centimeter high road marking it was not working i believe in many cities you can find uh, uh, such type maybe differently looking but still uh, again, to enforce traffic rules, it was uh, 2012, even earlier maybe. Uh, it was uh, kind of flash mob to show uh, that uh, par parked cars don't, uh, nobody cares about parked cars. So, uh, okay, nobody cares about our refrigerator and uh, city didn't build uh, parkings for uh, parked cars so they can uh, park on sidewalks they can park off on tram uh, tracks everywhere so uh, city didn't build a uh, parking for refrigerators or space for refrigerators outside the streets so let's just put it everywhere and after some time it was uh, end of this flash mob when uh, special um, Track for evacuating uh, relators came and uh, took this uh, refrigerator from from track. After this, it was a uh, uh, much uh, very successful initiative. Uh, continuation of the process uh, by the same NGOs. Uh, they started to crowdfunding. Uh, 
small poles to uh, on sidewalk to protect from uh, entrance of cars. They collected, I think, 100 uh, uh, costs for 100 of uh, poles. And after some time, uh, to the right, you can see uh, City Council approved uh, design of uh, the poles, and City Council started to integrating the poles into our project. So, uh, like the CMGO showed that it works, spent some money to prove that uh, this is working uh, idea, and uh, later a city was. Uh, a, City agreed that uh, it's working, it's better to protect in some spaces, it's uh, cheaper and more nicely looking than uh, other uh, methods to enforce traffic, uh, car parking, and so on. Uh, then, for long time concepts, uh, there is Bandera Street in Lviv. It was a very, very hard discussion about how street should be look, should look like after reconstruction. So uh, after few years of discussion, uh, city did a very short piece of uh, of street of, as demonstration how the the street would look like. So. Uh, it was much cheaper than uh, reconstruct all the street and the uh, design of the street was just developing. Uh, I hope within months it would start, uh, reconstruction would finally start. But it was done a few years ago and then design was in process. But uh, to show how it would look like, how that it should be uh, organized uh, car parking, it should be a nice place for trees, it should be a differentiation between transit zone of uh, trottoir and uh, another zone where doors of buildings are opening, where uh, doors of cars are opening and so on. So uh, again, it's it's from one side tactical urbanism, from other it's some capital investment. Uh, do you think uh, maybe is it uh, from your point of view who can say uh, is it tactical urbanism or it's something different? Anybody can say something? Especially people from Lviv who may know the situation with Bandera Street. Is it somebody from no. Lviv here? <laughs> yeah, for sure. At least two people should be from Lviv. I mean, somebody who can say something about it. Come on, guys, there is no wrong answer. <laughs> uh, so I may, may tell, I will tell. Uh, much sure. more than someone other here today, but I can uh, suppose that uh, some points of uh, your presentation was like tactical urbanism and some uh, was like action against government probably, against some uh, people on uh, automobile and uh, that's why I think that in a time uh, we will make some greatest actions uh, to tell uh, our point of view to the urban space, to the streets, and it will be better. But uh, here was like different little points, like different actions, which was not so great. Because when we see tactical urbanism in Google somewhere over the world, we see something mixed together with art. And uh, this stuff was probably more like DIY. And, uh, but this is also interesting and every time uh, upper part of Europe was another than, for example, uh, west part. So that's why I think that it's our type of uh, tactical urbanism. Yes, thank you. Uh, it's, for me, it's very important to have feedback because actually uh, what I started, that, uh, it's not uh, 
not not very clear definition between what is and what is not. And if you say uh, oh, sorry. Uh, if uh, we say about only art, then we can avoid uh, another very important things. And I believe uh, about art part, uh, we will explain much better. Than me. <laughs> so I will continue about infrastructure for it. For a few minutes. Uh, then uh, the Tomer example, it's a uh, very huge uh, square in the very city center, which is uh, used only for uh, for traffic. And it says that it would be repainted graphic lines. Uh, so uh, after after uh, this traffic arrangements uh, temporarily were done, uh, city changed uh, uh, Temporarily, rest of space they uh, uh, introduced uh, like parking of Borna Square to create kind of park. You can see on left photo how big space was not used by cars and uh, it could be easily removed. So uh, it was a very lot of activities. You again can search for it much more because it was very interesting, very full of life project for weekend, I think. After this, city decided to go back. And city decided to return uh, to, to old, old the use of this space, unfortunately. You can see how the space looks. It's after this uh, parking of Suborne event. So uh, they decided that it's not so good to have activities in the central square of the city. It's better to have a lot of asphalt. But from other side, we have Ternopil. A lot of traffic. And again, they decided to install around the boat. So idea is that uh, costs of uh, reorganization uh, from traffic lights to this roundabout was uh, around 1,000 euro, which is uh, very reasonable costs uh, to proof concept. And they, after some time, uh, so it was easy for the city to uh, spend such amount. And also it was understandable that after some time you anyway need to remove it and change uh, or back from, to a previous uh, organization or to new organization. In case of Ternopil, they change it to new organization and uh, uh, from point of view of traffic, it was uh, much better because uh, decreased congestion in uh, this part of city. And after success of uh, this first roundabout, in Ternopil, they launched another roundabout in another part of the city, in another intersection where they had problems. So uh, it's, I believe it's also partly tactical urbanism and short-term measures and everything, but it's on this place only about traffic. Uh, another non... Uh, uh, like 
soft measure was uh, Mitskevich Square in one of Antivsk. It's uh, one of central squares in the city, which was uh, scheduled for reconstruction and uh, local team designed it uh, in very good way, but this traffic you can see around about on uh, photo of this, which was there historically, like it was traffic there, it was transit street, but uh, something happened and the uh, reconstruction was, uh, the street was, the square was closed for reconstruction, not for four months, as it was initially start, uh, designed, but for one year. And uh, when after a year of closure of this street, uh, nothing happened with traffic. It was no uh, terrible congestion and all this. He, he, it was no uh, problems of uh, getting from one side to another. It was no problems to public transport and so on. Uh, at the event of uh, opening this uh, after construction, city mayor told it would be closed for uh, traffic, it would be pedestrian only. And when you come to uh, ivano frankivsk you can clearly see uh, on this uh, square and uh, Lesiokrenki street adjacent, you can see uh, marked parking spaces, you can see uh, pedestrian crossings uh, paved uh, with stones, you can see, well, not traffic lights or uh, traffic signs, but uh, every, every markings which you need to, uh, to understand how to behave as driver, but it's closed for traffic, just because it was so uh, successful design and it was uh, too good. Uh, it was no, from point of view uh, of the city, uh, it was no harm to traffic and it was a lot of, or at least not, not big harm to, to traffic and a lot of uh, benefits as for pedestrian center of city. I invite you to visit this area, it's very interesting. Uh, again, partly tactical urbanism, partly traffic arrangements, uh, delineators, uh, which is a way to in enforce traffic rules or overtaking or parking. In, in terms of Kyiv, they have a huge problem of parking and the same was in Lviv. Uh, in 2015, uh, it was introduced bus lane on, uh, again, Ubod Avenue. And it was separated by plastic, uh, this plastic delineator. But in 2018, after uh, this plastic was worn off, uh, they were removed. And still nobody, almost nobody, there are still some people uh, breaking rules and uh, bus lane is working properly on this street. So uh, like people, uh, drivers were educated that right lane is only for public transport and uh, in uh, rush hour you can easily see that uh, it's like all the city and street is congested but uh, uh, this bus lane is kind of clear and transport can pass it. Uh, one more example of uh, where I was involved, it was reconstruction of Nechialovitsko uh, street, which uh, uh, design was already done. So it's in intervention in, in design, uh, which was kind of approved, but it was political will that you can change something. So together with a few other people, we suggested to enhance this uh, sidewalk because it's no traffic there. So to the right, you can see uh, how it look, looks like now. It's much wider sidewalk. Uh, it is different pavement for well, it, it's dirt because I, it, uh, this photo I added only today during the previous presentation. And uh, it was photo of uh, in process of construction or just after construction when it was not clean. While well, it's more than four years now. And uh, here was uh, 
other case when uh, about not to uh, not to get in conflict with police, but uh, somehow explain them that uh, it's not uh, always important to strictly follow rules. Here is uh, you see green rectangle is a place where it's still from point of view of driver it is possible to park cars but uh, because of uh, curve uh, on of tram tracks uh, tram need a wider corridor and uh, if you park there you will uh, block uh, tram it, uh, it was happening before reconstruction for some times but uh, the only thing which sur which save it's a uh, piece like uh, some sewage pipe which was here and local citizens knew that if you park after it is possible if you park before you block the tram but uh, after reconstruction of street you wouldn't notice it so and also it was not possible to uh, put official uh, there are a pedestrian island for which it is required at least two meters because it, uh, uh, it should be enough space for bicycle to wait there or for uh, somebody with uh, child cards in front of or something so uh, but uh, in the widest place it is I think 1.6 meters not not even two and uh, it was written from the city to to designers and to police that please approve that it is not a pedestrian island it's just a separation island and oh oops we uh, also did here pedestrian crossing but it's not pedestrian island because it's not not uh, fitting the norms but still it's needed and the police uh, agreed that it's needed to not to, to uh, explain people that uh, where they can park and where they cannot park and uh, now it's working for a few years on the street uh, again uh, Lviv. Uh, this is old photo of Kidvalna street which is very congested because uh, two uh, Two lines merge in one and after uh, this it, it was all design which is which was done many years ago and still city have no time and cost to uh, make full reconstruction of streets so after long discussion it was decided to have pedestrian island which uh, so that uh, all traffic would be pushed to one lane before this uh, difficult location and it was decided to have test island and it was sent to the local administration and they decided okay let's do this way so they just pushed in the middle of road two poles on the poles they put signs and that it and luckily police was uh, uh, supporting us so when uh, some uh, uh not happy people wrote to police official request what why the signs are in the middle of street do you think it's dangerous so police told that uh, you see this white sign it's uh, keep right to bypass the obstacle and obstacle is the pole on which uh, the sign is installed so sorry everything according to construction norms and after some time it was uh, turned into real island which is uh, separating which is showing where you have to merge from two lanes into one so uh, i hope i'm not very fast and let's improve our space uh, you see part of this uh, monument to spaceman which is in front of our hospital which which would be the topic of workshop thank you mm -hmm.
Yeah, uh, thank you, Pablo. Uh, maybe before, yeah, while uh, the um, uh, participants are thinking about their questions, maybe I can sum up briefly. And I like that you even finished with a different view on the spot. Uh, so your um, photo looking into traffic topics, into cars. Yeah, and that means that, uh, of course, we have a park, we have a buildings, but in general, let's maybe think even wider and consider even traffic situation. Uh, what I remember from the video that we have there, like um, the typical street, but uh, already reconstructed. And as I remember, um, like fix me if I'm right, uh, if I'm wrong, uh, there is two lanes uh, and two bike lanes from both sides. Yeah, and uh, some new pedestrian crossings from maybe not in front of the um, monument, but a little bit aside. So still maybe now the traffic is not so fast and not so like uh, crowded, but Still, yeah, I think while analyzing the, the place uh, and uh, during the Olga's presentation about the place uh, in the end of uh, today's, uh, maybe we will think also about, not only about public space, but also about traffic. And uh, if uh, there is any questions about uh, Pavlo's experience and Ukrainian cases, just uh, jump in and uh, ask like whatever you like uh, voice or text in chat if there is no questions from uh, like uh, as for now and you can think about them i can ask uh, and uh, yeah, kind of, um, yeah, we already started to uh, talk about this, like what is tactical and what is not. And um, comparing, for example, uh, some tools and measures from Tom's presentation about his experience in uh, Brazil and in Germany and uh, means and tools uh, which you presented, uh, like uh, what is the... Uh, uh, yeah, what is the difference uh, uh, and, and why do you think? Like it's also like a, a kind of general questions, but uh, yeah, Pavlo, if you can, if you can answer, like, listen, because you, you listened to Ton's, yeah, presentation. Yeah, and from your like Ukrainian point of view, like, like insider, like w what is the difference? Yeah, and why uh, we use such different tools? for what we call tactical urbanism? Uh, well, uh, it's uh, a bit different because, uh, well, I'm not really in art area of city, so uh, I believe uh, Liana would uh, explain a lot about uh, what happened in even the same city from other side, and I would know uh, much more what also what happened in the city. Uh, also, it, it's because different tasks uh, and uh, currently most of uh, what I showed and what I work with or know from colleagues, it's uh, about organization of uh, mobility and it's, it's also require uh, a lot of changes which are not uh, not known for uh, average employee of uh, local administration, and they are very scared with uh, with doing something unknown. But still, if if you prove that it, it's possible, uh, they would do it, and they would uh, replicate it in many other places. Like uh, after I showed at the beginning, uh, issue is. Uh, like uh, with trees in Muzaina, but uh, there were a lot of streets where uh, it was the same because uh, if you look at the city in 2013 or 2012, uh, before uh, this, 
issue take place, this uh, event of uh, Mitskevich Square, uh, nobody from city administration would believe that uh, you can plant new trees and you can plant it without approving that there is no any network uh, utility below 10 meters and this tree would damage something and so on. Also, if you, uh, uh, this, this is uh, again to push local officials uh, to uh, and explain that we need cycling infrastructure and after some time it was uh, done and now it is done as uh, part of any project. Uh, the same about uh, even this one because uh, now city quite uh, often approve uh, closure of streets in different, uh, def definitely with different uh, traffic measures, say so without this concrete uh, uh, pieces of uh, concrete, but uh, it's, uh, it's final, it, after some time it's understood by the city how to. So uh, from my point of view it's uh, this Tactical urbanism is to prove something uh, which uh, city cannot do uh, from one or another reason. And after some time, a uh, result of success would be that city's uh, local administration is taking this and replicating it. Uh, the same with, I don't know, with benches, with this poles. If, uh, if city is understanding that it's needed and uh, that this public space should be in better condition than it is now, uh, then uh, after some time city would improve it in, uh, in a proper way. But uh, you need to show that uh, there would be people if you do something. There mm. would be an uh, effect when you spend at least some time and money even with small costs and uh, maybe not as beautiful as city would do with uh, big investment, but uh, to explain and to have proof that it works. After it works, you can show, uh, you can go to the city and say, look, we have this and this results. We have a lot of people who use this. We have uh, uh, like nothing bad happened. We have, we reached uh, what we need. Mm -hmm. And now city would uh, do this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Pavlo, I got the point. Uh, thank you. And uh, we have uh, two questions now. One was from uh, Liana, as I understood first, and one is in chat. And Liana, if you are ready to ask and still have your question, please. Uh, it was not like question. It was um, some compare. Uh, why Tons' uh, ah, okay. ideas mm -hmm. were like something in other and our ideas was like not so artist maybe not so uh, interesting because we don't feel safety in our place don't feel uh, enough space for us for moving to the city and uh, as we told with stone we have this problem that people with uh, car think that they are kings in the city and uh, uh, probably when some people need to have this fighting uh, to their space for the space, uh, everyone then thinks that in Lviv all our tactical urbanism is against car, and uh, I think that it's not so bad idea, but it's not so colorful than in Europe. But we must uh, have all these urbanists, all these guys who have this idea in their heads, probably in government, in city government, and then everything will be okay. And uh, as we see now, we have more than hundred kilometers of uh, bicycle roads and uh, some ideas with uh, all the space for uh, humans go walk around uh, near the street and everything is okay in some places in some places still not but i think everything become better cool Th thank you for this comment yeah. yeah and regarding the question from ellen even i can sh very shortly uh, like answer because i know the case and i was even involved in forming the public program for the event when the mm, uh, the surround uh, this big squ traffic square was closed 
like my short hypothesis that uh, uh, that step was too big for this city. You know, they choose the very central square and uh, decided just to close it or to, to make the, the space for cars very narrow comparing to what was before. If they, start, if they would start with smaller maybe square, with a smaller intersection, like uh, maybe it, it, it would be successful. This is my, that this, you know, this fish is too, too big, <laughs> yeah, you know, in this ocean of traffic problems, but maybe also Pavlo can answer uh, shortly. Well, uh, it was uh, a lot of uh, issues. Uh, one was political because it was change, there were changes in uh, city administration and uh, this project was pushed by uh, GIZ uh, and by other uh, partners. Uh, there was at the beginning very big support because uh, it was idea to have a demonstration project which would show that city is changing, that city council is changing, that uh, perception of city by citizen is changing. So that's why it was decided to have a very central location. In fact, it's the, really the central square on which you can see all the main streets emerging. And uh, for the city it was very bad uh, because uh, if you go from Lviv to Kiev, it is easier, if you drive far, it's easier to go through this very central square than to go on Zhitomir bypass. So they had very lot of transit traffic, they had uh, a lot of issues here, but an idea was to, to do this big project. But uh, uh, it, during the project, it was uh, some political changes in the uh, city council and uh, people who think that oh, all traffic would stay, would be congested and uh, we cannot have so much place for parking and like uh, what you will do with so big uh, place for pedestrians, they have some place in uh, uh, nearby, so why do we need so much, so much space for pedestrians? Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, uh, yeah. Sorry, I, I should the yeah, yeah, yeah. finalized here because uh, we need some break. Yeah, just uh, yeah. One tip: take into account not only the you know financial possibilities and so on, but also the uh, political side. <laughs> yeah, and Ukrainian I, context. Uh, uh, very little. Uh, uh, like notice about it uh, that in Lviv, in Levandivka, uh, some activists also wanted to make a uh, skate park. But then uh, some old uh, woman came and uh, old people from all this region and told that skate park is from Satana probably and it's not okay for the children and for the grandchildren and they told that it's very bad stuff because uh, all these extreme kinds of sports are not okay in Ukraine and this part of uh, Ukraine also. So that's why I think it's one of idea why it was not so cozy for the city. Yeah, you never know how participation will end with different kinds of people, yeah? Yeah, yeah? yeah, so in Ukraine we should be ready for everything. But it's interesting, it's a puzzle. Uh, thank you very much, yeah, pa pa Pavlo and Liana and Dalian for the questions. And uh, I think that that was very relevant for our cases. Uh, uh, let's have a uh, Anya, you wanted to, to say something also mm -hmm. before the break? Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, we'll have a, uh, now a short uh, break, uh, like 10 minutes, and uh, we would like to ask uh, uh, all the participants uh, to follow the link during the break, which you s can see on the chat, and fill in uh, who hasn't done it yet. Yeah, uh, Your information in this participant list, uh, it's for our donors, it's very essential, so that we can uh, sign in it together. Uh, in the end of the day or like uh, tomorrow uh, and uh, see you see you uh, soon and we will continue with uh, the lecture uh, of uh, Liana Metzko about the uh, art art um, uh, 
part, so to say, uh, in uh, tactical urbanism and how it's connected and how we can uh, collaborate with uh, people and community in the city. And uh, see you at uh, 5.30 Kiev time and 4.30 Berlin time. Thank <laughs> you.